Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, back to this winter wonderland of a background. <laughs> I was so excited that so many of you commented on how nice this background looked because I worked so hard on dialing in the lighting just right and getting you far enough away so that there's a nice depth of field. So thank you to anyone who said they liked this background. It is back again and I will keep it for as long as I can. When is it inappropriate to still have Christmas lights and a Christmas tree up? Are we thinking February 1st? Because if so, I will keep it up until then. Anyway, today's video is going to be a book recommendations video featuring my pug's snores. He's right over there and I feel like the mic is picking up on it. So if you hear him, he's just getting, getting in a little winter nap, right? Can you blame him? Anyway, today's video is going to be a book recommendations video. I've done this a few times. It's so fun to get these really unique prompts from everyone and then try to find books that fit into those categories. But the point of these book recommendations videos, especially this close to Christmas, is to give you some book buying wrecks, right? We have like two weeks until Christmas, maybe a little less at this point, and you might be shuffling to find a good gift. My thoughts, and yes, I'm a reader, so, I'm not saying I'm right, but I feel like you can't go wrong with a book, right? Even if the person you're buying a book for isn't a huge reader, it still means I thought of you. It still means this is the gift that keeps on giving. You know what I mean? So, yes. <laughs> okay, so that's what today's video is. I have so many books off to my left with post-it notes and they're all organized into different genres and categories. But before we get into these book wrecks, I do want to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is HelloFresh, which is so exciting because I've used HelloFresh many, many, many times on my own. You've seen it in reading vlogs. Um, so the fact that they wanted to work with me is so exciting. So I'm going to hand you off now to sponsorship, Noelle, and then I'll be back. Miss Maroon will be back with <laughs> some book recommendations. So there you go. Hi everyone, me and Parker here to tell you about HelloFresh, talk to you about them, offer you a discount code. Um, I'm genuinely so excited that HelloFresh wanted to work with me because I have been using them and they have been in other videos of mine. <laughs> so the fact that they wanted to work with me is so cool because I already know how delicious their food is and how just easy it is to use their product because to me, it's like if I order three meals for the week for just me and my partner, I know that we're gonna eat three amazing meals and I don't have to worry about grocery shopping for them. I don't have to worry about trying to find all the ingredients. I know that I'm gonna have them, especially around the holiday season. I always feel like, because I don't think I'm a very good cook, I always feel a little left out. Like I see all of my family members making these amazing holiday meals. And so being able to go on to HelloFresh's website and look at their menus and pick out the more seasonal recipes, it just makes my house more cozy. So that's another reason why I love using HelloFresh because no food goes to waste and they're delicious and I just love them. So yeah, I got three meals this week. The shepherd's pie, which I've already had and loved, loved it. And then the pasta primavera I made in this video, so you saw it already, but here is my reaction to how it tasted. I'm gonna mix it up, make sure everything, okay, just lost some cheese. Max is interested. Let's try this. I want some zucchini and some pepper. That is a damn good bite, my friends. The lemon really elevates it. Holy smokes. I'm trying to give you two thumbs up because that's what it deserves. Love it, delicious. Max is jealous, but she doesn't get a bite, so yay. And then I also got the miso apricot chicken. I'm making this tonight for dinner, which I'm super excited about, but I love, I love HelloFresh and I'm so excited that they wanted to work with me. So if you'd like to try HelloFresh, you can go to hellofresh.com and use the code NOEL14 for up to 14 meals free and three free gifts. So thanks so much to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get into the book recommendations. All right, friends, we're gonna jump right into these book recommendations. Let me also say that most of these books I'm working with are from prompts, but there are some books on this list that I'm just gonna generally recommend because I think 
These are either fantastic books or there's some really cool editions out right now that I think are really pretty that could be really great for a book collector. So I'll save those for the second half of the video or the later part of the video. We'll do the prompts first and then we'll do more general recommendations like quite a few classics that I thought, you know what, we're all like hesitant of reading classics, but then we all want to collect classics, you know what I mean? So, but we're gonna save those books for later. Instead, we're gonna start with the first prompt, which I have three books for. <laughs> and that is, I need a book for a friend who's fallen away from literature. So this person was a reader and is no longer reading as much as they used to. This friend, wonderful friend, is trying to find a way to connect again with that literary bone. You know what I mean? So I have three book recommendations for this one, and that is short story collections that I've read this year that I think would make an excellent addition to a reader's collection, but also if someone has fallen away from reading, they used to love reading, they've kind of drifted, they wanna find their way back. Short story collections are wonderful because it's not, oh my God, I have to read this entire book. It's a, okay, cool, I have a book, I have a wonderful book, beautiful cover, but I only need to read this a story at a time. So the three short story collections I'm recommending today are Her Body and Other Parties, which is an incredible short story collection by Carmen Maria Machado, one of my favorite authors, incredible work, incredible writing. But in this, she really leans into the horror Right. So if you're looking for someone who's maybe a little edgy, looking for kind of some scary stories, something a little more horror, a little more thriller, this is an incredible short story collection. I loved it so much. It was wonderful. And again, I feel like this really fits the prompt. Next, we have The Secret Lives of Church Ladies. I read this in like April or May. And by the first short story, Peach Cobbler, I knew it was gonna be a new favorite. Each book. The thing with short story collections is that I start to feel like, oh no, I just wanna go back to the other character. I really liked that story. I don't wanna start a new one. Not with this one, my friends. Each time I was about a paragraph into the next story, I was hooked and I didn't wanna put it down. I think I read it in half a day because I just wanted to get as much of this writing into my brain as I could. I thought it was phenomenal. I loved it so much. And everyone who's read it, I feel like all the people that I've seen who've read it, absolutely agree. It's a wonderful, wonderful collection. And I loved it. It's short and sweet. If you're not trying to overwhelm the reader in your life, this is a great, amazing book. And I highly recommend. And then the final short story collection I'm gonna recommend is Sabrina and Karina. People have been telling me to read this for a couple months. I picked it up and I had no regrets. It was wonderful. The writing was excellent. Each story was so unique, so unique. That's the other fear I have with short story collections is that each of the stories start to melt into each other and they start to feel too familiar. With all of these, I felt like each story fit into the theme of the collection, but overall each story stood out as its own. So those are three short story collections I really loved. All right, for this next prompt, we've got, I really like contemporary fiction because I've never found a classic that was very impactful. And so what I'm getting from this, and I might be wrong, but what I'm thinking is that you need a book that has been published recently, but might have like a classical feeling to it, right? Maybe it's not an actual classic, whatever is a classic, right? But it kind of fits into that group without really being a classic. It's a little more accessible. That's what I'm hoping for. And so I'm gonna recommend you, if we were villains, this is a book that I read in October and it was so fun. Now I'll tell you this, for some people this book really works, for others it's really boring. So definitely read up on it before you give it a spin, maybe read a few reviews, but it worked for me personally. I really enjoyed this book. I say that it fits into the contemporary because it's been released recently in the last few years, but it's also about a murder mystery. There are seven friends and one of the seven dies and you know that the other six know something about it, but you don't know who's truly guilty or if they have anything to do with it or if they 
well, I won't say anything, but in any case, uh, there's, you know, a bit of mystery, a bit of intrigue, but it all surrounds this group of friends that's in the Shakespearean department of this artsy school. And so it feels classic, classical because it has the Shakespearean presence in it, but it also feels contemporary because it's taking place now and it's about these friendships and each character has their issues. You're understanding each one of their kind of good sides and bad sides. And so I hope this is what you're looking for. Look up some reviews to make sure it's something you might like. But I know some people have a problem with how much Shakespeare's talked about in this. And I'll say, I didn't, I personally didn't feel like the Shakespeare knowledge was alienating, right? I only knew a handful of the plays they were talking about. So I didn't even understand all of the references, but I still felt like I was able to follow the story really well. And the mystery was really compelling. So that's what I have to recommend for this prompt. Okay, I had to restart the fire behind me. So if it's not blazing like it was before, I fixed it now. Um, all right, the next prompt kind of folds into the last one, kind of that contemporary wanting to read a classic, but not really connecting with classics. This is the prompt that says, I want to feel smart without reading a classic. Love it. I feel the same way, honestly. So the first book I'm going to recommend for this prompt is The Chosen and the Beautiful. This is a Great Gatsby retelling, and I thought it was simply stunning. I thought the writing dazzled before me. I thought the story shimmered in front of the reader, and I just had such a ball reading it. I will say that to people who love The Great Gatsby, I have heard a few times don't really love this book because they have the original text and they're like, I just wanna stick with the original Great Gatsby. That's my favorite. So I get that, right? People like their original story, that's fine. I personally loved this version way more because it did for me what I wanted The Great Gatsby to do. This book shines, it shimmers, it glows. The writing dazzled me. There was so much description around jewels emeralds, sapphires, diamonds, champagne bubbles, fireworks, like it did everything beautifully. And I loved the story. It basically follows the same story of The Great Gatsby because it is a retelling, but there's elements of this paper magic woven into it. And I just thought it was so well done. But if you want to read a book where you feel smart or you kind of want to read a classic, but you don't want to read a classic, I highly recommend The Chosen and the Beautiful because that's what it did for me. And then the second, and I guess third, because I'm going to tack on another one to this prompt, is a book I've recommended no less than 3,000 times in my time under the sun. Oh my god, I will never stop talking about this book. I've read it once, like five years ago, and I will not shut up about it. Uh, but that is Kristen Hanna's The Nightingale. I would also recommend Kristen Hanna's the Four Winds. These are historical fictions that deal with completely different subjects, but the writing is stunning but accessible. I never felt like the writing was too far ahead of me. You know, sometimes when I read historical fiction, I feel like I don't know the subject well enough, and so I don't know what you're saying, you know? But with this book and with The Four Winds, I felt like it was really a story in a time period that I was learning about. You know what I mean? Uh, the Nightingale takes place in World War II France, Nazi-occupied World War II France. And you're watching as two sisters are dealing with this invasion in very different ways. And then The Four Winds deals with a mother and daughter living through um, the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl and moving to California from Oklahoma and how that goes. So both of these books deal with female relationships, sister to sister, mother to daughter, tears flowed, history was learned, and I feel like each one of these made me feel smarter without being too dense to understand, you know, like often classics do to me. So there you go. All right, the next three books that I have for a prompt is I need a book for my mom who loves true crime. So I'm gonna recommend you three. But in transparency, I've only fully read one of these. I've partially read one of them. And then I've only just heard fantastic things about the third one. Um, so let's start with the one that I've actually read. And that is Dead Wake by Eric Larson. This is a historical exploration of the sinking of the Lusitania by a German U-boat submarine. 
Uh, it is fascinating. The writing is incredible and it is all true. It is all historical. Eric Larson does a shit ton of research before he writes. So this is not operating as like a love story on the Titanic. You know what I mean? This is like actual collected journals and collected entries and collected historical documents that then feed into writing about this historical moment in World War II. So I love this book. And if your mom likes true crime, it's not really a crime. Like it's not a true crime story, but it is historical. And I thought this would fit the prompt. So that's one that I've read. Another one that I've started by Eric Larson, but I haven't finished it, is The Devil in the White City. I will read this godforsaken book once in my life. I swear to you and all around you that I will finish this book one day. Um, but this is a historical book that talks about bringing Chicago circa 1893 to vivid life. Eric Larson's spellbinding bestseller intertwines the true tale of two men, the brilliant architect behind the legendary 1893 World's Fair, striking to secure America's place in the world, and the cunning serial killer who used the fair to lure his victims to their death. Combining meticulous research with nail-biting storytelling, Eric Larson has crafted a narrative with all the wonder of newly discovered history and the thrills of the best fiction. So, true crime. It's in this, and I think your mom would love it. And then the last book I'm going to recommend, this is the book that I haven't read yet, but I have only heard phenomenal things about it from multiple people, and that is Say Nothing, A True Story of Murder and Memory in Northern Ireland. So not only do I hear this book is fantastic, but the audiobook is also fantastic from people who have told me they've listened to it. Um, and so I definitely 100% plan on reading this very soon. It's just that it's a pretty thick bitch. And um, at this point in time, I'm trying to <laughs> get my degree. And that means that reading a book so historically thick is not at the top of my priority list. But if you pick this up, I hope your mom enjoys it. And again, I just hear some fantastic things about it. So there you go. All right, the next prompt is a book for someone who just graduated with their master's degree. I've got you covered, I've got two. The first one is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife. This was a book that I read in November. Yes, November. Um, it was my November book clip book club pick with Elias and Joel. We had quite the time reading it. It was such a fun live show. It was wonderful. So the reason why I recommend this book for someone who's just recently graduated is that it still takes place at a university, but it takes place at a reunion, right? So if you've just graduated, you're like, okay, I'm not fully ready to let go of school or let go of that university feeling, but I'm not quite in the throes of it anymore. I feel like this one checks those boxes because we do get a lot of flashbacks, right? We get moments in the present at this 10 year reunion at the university. And then we get moments back in time at the university when these people were still students. And basically a murder happens when they're all students. 10 years later, they reunite at this reunion and everyone's trying to get to the bottom of this murder that took place 10 years ago. So I feel like this kind of gets the prompt. You know what I mean? It's saying, yes, I've graduated, but no, I'm not ready to let go yet. And I feel like that does it. And it's also like, it's a thriller. So it's just like such a great reprieve from just reading a bunch of shit for your degree. You know what I mean? So if you pick this up, I hope you have the best time with it. The other book I wanted to recommend for this category was this incredible book called Greek Mythology, The Gods, Goddesses, and Heroes Handbook. This is just for someone who's just graduated and is like, you know what? I still want my mind to be working, but I want it to be effortless. You know what I mean? I want it to be fun. And what I like about this is that it talks all about different Greeks, gods and goddesses, but there's some incredible art within the book that I feel like makes it more fun, right? So you're learning a lot about these gods and goddesses, but you're doing it with some really great artwork that just kind of gets the creative juices flowing. You know what I mean? Juices is such a weird word to use there, but do you know what I'm saying? I just feel like this book is fun. It's beautiful. 
And it makes you, like, you're still learning, because I don't know all of these gods and goddesses. For the love of God, that's a lot to learn. Love of God. <laughs> um, anyway, so you're learning, but it's a beautiful journey. Less high stakes, you know what I mean? So there we go. The next prompt is, I would love a book that's unconventional horror. I mean, are we even surprised that I'm going to say these two books? We're absolutely not surprised. Unconventional horror? Hi! Yes, the first one is In the Dream House. What? This is a memoir. What do you mean? It is a memoir, but the memoir is told through various different scary movie and horror tropes. What do I mean? I'll tell you right now. Dream House as confession. Dream House as demonic possession. Dream House as haunted mansion. Dream House as Sniffs from Ink of Women. Dream House as Apocalypse. Dream House as Surprise Ending. Dream House as Sci-Fi Thriller. So you get, you get the point. I say this is unconventional horror because the story and the memoir told within deals a lot with abuse in a relationship. It's a beautiful, stunning memoir, but it's told through these tropes, through these places, through these writing styles, and it's fantastic. It is so wonderfully done, in my opinion. Um, again, this is by Carmen Maria Machado, one of my favorite authors, same woman that wrote uh, Her Body and Other Parties. So I loved this, and I feel like if you're looking for something a little unconventional, something that... I feel like you're not expecting to sneak up on you. This is a great one. Another one, we're not surprised by this answer is, I'm thinking of ending things. This is an incredibly weird horror novel. It is so strange, but it is so spooky. If you get the audiobook for it, it will really freak out the reader. It is just all over the place. It makes my skin crawl. It is so weird, but in a very cool way. So definitely unconventional horror. I hope the reader enjoys. All right, so this one, I saw a few prompts for this, so there's no specific prompt, but I got a few questions for romance with no steam or very little steam. And so the first one I'm gonna recommend is a fa love story. This is a young adult romance that's kind of a Romeo and Juliet retelling in the restaurant industry. We have these two main characters whose families own opposing fa restaurants. And so the daughter and the son of each of these families are not supposed to be attracted to each other but inevitably they have to work on a school project together, I believe. They have to be around each other at some point for something. And they have a connection, but they understand that their families wouldn't approve. And it's just really fun. And I love books that take place in restaurants. And I just thought this was a really sweet romance. And so if you're looking for something romantic, but not very steamy, this is definitely one I recommend. All right, the next prompt I have is... I have a friend who needs fast paced books and they like either horror or romance. So I'm gonna give you two romance series that I'm highly, highly recommending that I personally love um, and that are super fast paced. And I feel like if you get your friend the trilogy of these books, right? Each one of the books in the series, they'll have something that they can really tear into and have a lot of content. But since each one of them are short individual romances, they'll be able to read them very fast and then want to read the next one and the next one, right? So the first romance series I would recommend is the Brown Sisters Trilogy by Talia Hibbert. This is a fantastic romance series, very fast paced. The story starts off right away with each one of them and it explores three different sisters and their way to love. Personally, my favorite is Act Your Age Eve Brown. It's the last one, came out this year. Oh my God, oh my God. Wonderful, fantastic, stunning, loved it, super steamy, loved the writing, love Eve. Oh my God, loved the whole book. I thought it was so good. Um, but again, fast paced, right? Like I don't think it really slows down. They're fast enough where you're like, well, what's gonna happen? Are they gonna end up together or are they not? What's the tension? Is this gonna work out between the two of them? Love it. The next 
book series I would recommend. There are three books in this series. I have talked so much about these books. Oh my God, I love them so much. I reread two of them this year right before the third one came out. And that is the Kiss Quotient series. Good God, heaven above. Love and steam meet here, my friends. They meet here and it is wonderfully done. We have the Kiss Quotient, the Bride Test, and the Heart Principle. What's my favorite one, you ask? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I am gonna say The Kiss Quotient because it was one of the first books I read in romance that like really made me fall in love with romance in 2020. These books just do it, you know? Each one of these series do it. They're fun, they're hilarious, they're steamy, they're also purely romantic and wonderful. And I just love a romance that ties in, right? Like the three, the thing that I love is that these are books of threes. And so if your friend is looking for something fast paced and romantic, these do that, but you're not done. Like you finish Get a Life Chloe Brown and you go, what's happening with Eve Brown though? Or what's happening with Danny Brown? You know, you wanna know about these other characters, you want to explore their stories, but it's not one long 900 page book. You know what I mean? So I hope that helps. And I hope your friend has a wonderful time reading them. All right, next recommendation. We've got, I'm buying a book for my friend and I'd really like one that really leans into strong friendships between the two main characters. Well, we've got another romance, <laughs> right? It never ends here. Um, so I hope your friend likes romances because this one has a really, really sweet friendship, a really pure friendship, a really comforting friendship. And that is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. This is a romance um, and there is a lot of tension. There is a lot of sadness as well. I cried like a baby when I read this, um, but uh, there is some family death in this book. So I would definitely keep that in mind. And there's a lot of grief. So it's not an easy read, but the two main characters have such a strong friendship bond for so many years before anything happens between the two of them. And reading about their budding friendship is so comforting to me. Like that feeling of finding your soulmate on a friend level, that's 1000% how I feel about my best friend, Grace. I just feel like the universe made her for me and made me for her, you know? And so reading about such a tight friendship was so comforting to me. So if you need a book that really talks about like that kind of electrifying like connection of friends, I think Love in Other Words is amazing. And I just think it's wonderful. So, and super sweet and I loved it. So there's that. Okay, the next category was so challenging for me. And so if you are hearing me say this prompt and you have an answer for this, please leave it down in the comments so that other people can find these answers because I had such a hard time finding books like this. But the prompt is, I would like a sad romance with no death in it. And I could not think of them. So I'm going to recommend this first one that I believe fits this prompt because I don't remember there being any death, but it is sad, but ultimately happy. You know what I mean? Like happy ending, but with a lot of sadness, grief, and questions in between. And that is Seven Days in June. This is a romance that I read in June, and it's also one of my new favorite romances of the year. I loved this book. There is such a loss between the two main characters. They like had such a whirlwind romance when they were younger and then things just went wrong and they don't talk for like seven years, I think. Um, and then when they reconnect, they're so hurt by one another and they have so many questions and they're so mistrustful, but they also just feel so good being around each other again. I thought it was wonderful. I really enjoyed this book. Um, the reason why I say I don't think there's any death is because there might be a death that happened outside of the story, right? So I think maybe someone in their lives died, but not either of the main characters. You know what I mean? So I hope that, I hope that answers the prompt. 
it is sad, but it's ultimately really satisfying and really wonderful. So I really liked this book. Um, the next one definitely has death in it, but again, not death of one of the romantic leads in the story. And that is just last night. So 100% someone dies in this book and it made me sob, made me sob. Oh my God, I cried, but not in a not in a romantic way. So I hope that's okay. I hope that fits the prompt. I know it's kind of a gray area because there is death, but it's not. The romance isn't sad because of a romantic death. I hope that answered the prompt, but if it didn't, anyone who's listening to this right now, please leave a comment giving a suggestion in this category. A sad romance with no death, because that's what this person is looking for. So there we go. Okay. I'm done with prompts now, but I did want to just recommend a few books more that maybe didn't fit exactly into the prompts. But when I saw them on the shelves, I was like, I really want to recommend this. And so a few of these books are just my own recommendations without being tied to a prompt. The first one is A Thousand Ships. This is a um, Greek Trojan War retelling from a bunch of women's perspectives. It was brilliantly done and it, it covers so many women's perspectives, like from both the Trojan side and the Greek side. Um, and I was thinking of putting this in the, I just graduated and I need a book to read. And so if you've just recently graduated, but you kind of still want to feel like a little literary, a little historic, um, I think this book is awesome. And it gives a really cool different perspective on how you know the traditional Trojan War story. So really recommend this one. I also really recommend Smoke Gets in Your Eyes. This is a book that I read in 2020 and it's a whole story from the author. So Caitlin Daughtry talks about her life when she worked in a crematorium. So she talks about the cremation industry as well as just like the funeral and death industry. And she talks about like, how that is. And so I didn't really have a prompt for it, but I think that if you know anyone who isn't really squeamish about death, but is interested in the idea of like what comes after or like just like learning about someone's time in a crematory, then I think that this is an excellent book. I thought the writing was really well done. And hey, the back says demonically funny, which is exactly right. So highly recommend. Okay, and then the next set of books are gonna be some classics I recommend. Um, I think because I'm getting my degree, which I should, fingers crossed, have in about five months, God willing, I will have it very soon. Um, I often get asked for classic recommendations. And so here are a few that I think are really great. Um, and if you're looking to either buy someone a classic they've never read, or you're looking to buy someone a really cool edition of a book, I think that these kind of fit that category. The first one is Carmilla. This is the book that came before Dracula. Um, and it explores a female vampire who is seducing another woman um, and ultimately wants to change her into a vampire. But it's a, it's a little... Uh, it's a little seductive if you catch my drift and it is very, very good. I had such a good time reading it. But the reason why I recommend this edition is because not only is it very cool, it's also edited by Carmen Maria Machado, who again is the same author that wrote In the Dream House and Her Body and Other Parties. So I love her writing, um, but it also is illustrated. So we've got some really great illustrations inside. And so if you know someone who likes vampires or Dracula or studying the gothic that I think that this is a great book to pick up a reader who likes the vampire tradition. Why not? Okay, a classic that I feel like doesn't get enough love, but is also one of the most famous classics is Don Quixote. This is a book that I read this year for my degree and I laughed so hard. This book is like from the 16th century, my friends, and it made me laugh so hard. Cervantes did something so incredibly unique with the romantic chivalric genre. It was wonderful. I had such an amazing time reading it. I love discussing it with my colleagues in school. Um, 
but I just, I learned so much. It was one of my grandma's favorite books. So I felt this like very sweet sentimental feeling when I was reading it. But if you've ever wanted, if you've ever wanted to pick someone up a classic or if you yourself were like, I want to read like a classic right now. Don Quixote is phenomenal. It is so funny. I had such a good time with it. All right, so if we're talking about buying kind of editions of a book, whenever people see my editions of Shakespeare's novels, they always ask where they're from. And these are the Barnes and Noble editions of some of Shakespeare's plays, um, but they look like this. On the side, they look like this, and they all kind of match. They all are very cool, and they all look very structured and a little classic on a bookshelf. I think they're very, very cool, and I love them. I actually have Romeo and Juliet as well, but just not on me. So, um, yeah, I think they're awesome. If you, if you know someone who loves Shakespeare, if you know someone who's maybe going into a literature program or someone who just started one or someone who maybe just read If We Were Villains and you're like, hey, I'd like to get them the original source text. Then I think the Barnes and Noble editions are very cool of these texts. I know that they're not like the number one choice for uh, if you're like really studying <laughs> Shakespeare. Um, there's another set of editions that people really like, uh, but I didn't get them because I liked these covers more. So that's my answer to that. <laughs> and then the final three classics that I wanted to talk about that I feel like made me a better literature student and just a better reader are um, James Baldwin's Giovanni's Room, beautifully done, excellent writing. I'd also recommend If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin, both incredibly written, um, really love both of them. And again, I think they just made me a better reader and a better critical thinker. So really, really liked this book as well as If Beale Street Could Talk. Um, if we're talking like a classic you've probably heard the name of and maybe haven't read yet because it's intimidating because it's fucking Charles Dickens, uh, let's talk about it. Great Expectations. I read Bleak House and it was a bleak experience. I really don't like that book. And so when I had to read this for another class, I was like, no, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and then I did it and I had quite the time. This is, I thought it was fantastic. I had so much fun reading this book. I think that the characters are super flawed and they're super shitty and there's so much drama and tension and questions and... I just thought it was great. So I really enjoyed reading this this year. And again, it's like a classic that you've probably heard the name of, but maybe you haven't read, although it is a pretty popular book. So I wouldn't be surprised if you've read it. Um, and then the last book I'll recommend is Elizabeth Gaskell's North and South. Um, also just getting anyone a Penguin's edition. If you know that they love reading or collecting, I think you can't really go wrong with getting them just a good old Penguin's classic. I loved used Penguin's classics. Um, so like my copy is all like bent and the pages are all yellowing and there's definitely some water damage. Uh, and I love that shit. So if you know someone who likes a good used books, there's so many used Penguin's classics at used bookstores because they're so popular. Um, but also if your reader just loves a good old classic like just beautiful looking book. I feel like you can't go wrong with with a Penguin's classic. So um, anyway, I love North and South. There's a lot of tension, romance, beautiful descriptions of fruit. I wrote a whole paper on fruit around this book <laughs> um, and I loved writing it. So anyway, yeah. Anyway, my friends, that is the end of this video. I hope it was fun. I hope you got a good recommendation. I hope you go out and buy someone a beautiful book or a wonderful story or a super steamy romance, whatever you're looking for. I hope you found it in this book. But if not, I will again leave some creators down below that have recently made similar videos like this um, so you can find the perfect book for the reader in your life or for yourself. If you're looking to buy yourself something, no shame in that. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> okay. Um, thank you again to uh, HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. It was very cool working with you. And yeah, thank you all for watching this video. I hope you had fun and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.